Uh, welcome to the Jenkins documentation office hours. This is the December 22nd US EU edition. Uh, today we have myself, Mark Waite, and Bruno Verachten uh, joining us. So, um, quick note just uh, as a side, next week we will not have Jenkins documentation office hours. Uh, we'll be out of office. Most people will be busy with holidays and whatnot. So, uh, next week we won't be meeting, just as a heads up. Uh, aside from that, uh, we have some action items. Uh, just a quick note on the pipeline Docker plugin and what that means for the documentation. And uh, for the most part, just looking at the, just, uh, the 2022 recap newsletter uh, topics and ideas, and then uh, a couple of pull requests to take a look at and just make note of, um, considering that these sort of things are gonna be really important when we get back into the new year and just getting forward for Jenkins. And Mark's adding a note regarding the Jenkins backlog. So um, we'll get to that at the end as well. Uh, does anyone have anything else they'd like to add or anything I missed? All right then. Uh, so uh, first action item here on the list is uh, right now, what I'm doing is going through uh, the Jenkins Jira and find and going through all the website certificates specifically. Uh, Alex Brandes submitted a ticket to the help desk to make sure that this is taken care of and these uh, issues are cleaned up, um, closed if we don't need them or migrated if we should talk about them further. Uh, so I'm going through that list right now. I've gotten through about 60 to 70. Um, there's about 100 or so altogether. So uh, a lot of them have been able to get closed out because we've just got it in the documentation now. So uh, yeah, that'll be, again, something that gets finished up in the next couple months, probably sooner than that. Uh, and we'll be discussing those, those uh, really valid and uh, potential additions uh, as we go. Uh, next thing on the action items is archiving the doc mailing list. This will be something that gets started in January. Mark and I will be discussing uh, what we need to do to get to the starting point and what needs to happen after that. Um, so more information to come, but just so you know. Uh, and then I wanted to highlight a couple of blog posts that we've published recently. Uh, one is John Mark Messon's blog post for the Google Summer of Code Mentorship. Uh, it just goes really in depth on what mentorship means, what uh, in a mentor looks, uh, what mentorship looks like in Google Summer of Code, the expectations, what uh, opportunities they have, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, Google Summer of Code is uh, super in progress where the call for papers is coming up in uh, just about two weeks. I think January 5th is the call for papers deadline. Um, so we're in full swing, looking forward to Google Summer of Code right now. So uh, if you have any interest, you wanna speak, chat ideas, topics, how you can mentor, how you can participate, whatever have you, uh, we have plenty of resources and uh, the blog post is a great way to start. Uh, the other blog post that I wanted to call out and highlight here is uh, the recent post from Basil Crow. Uh, he wrote a wonderful and very detailed blog post about the uh, new baseline requirement for Jenkins plugin development, which is Java 11. Uh, this is a more recent update. The Java 11 requirement has been part of Jenkins itself for a few months now, but the uh, POM itself was upgraded to utilize Java 11. Uh, so this is, uh, something that we want to make sure is addressed and highlighted so folks are not getting lost or confused on what needs to happen next. Uh, anything else on the action items or good to go? Cool. All right. Nothing for me. All right then. Um, yep. Next small note, just uh, the pipeline Docker plugin. Uh, maybe we're looking at deprecation there. Uh, this is going to have far reaching impacts beyond just Jenkins. So, uh, we do need to figure out and, and really do some research and find out what the impact will be for Jenkins, for, uh, other companies, for other usage platforms, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is not something that can just be done, uh, without anyone noticing. So, uh, Mark is going to work with Darren Pope, Damien, uh, DePortal and myself, we're going to figure out what needs to happen and then once we know what kind of impacts we'll have, we'll start updating documentation and uh, making the necessary modifications. But uh, again, that's not something that's gonna happen in the next week or anything, so new year. Uh, and then again, we have our December, uh, the December newsletter is actually gonna be a 2022 recap newsletter for us. So uh, when we post it in January, and most likely in the first week, um, we'll, we're gonna be looking back at all the wonderful accomplishments we've had over the last year. Um, 
for me, it, I've only been here uh, at Jenkins, part of Jenkins for about eight months or so. And uh, it, even in my eight months, I know that there's more than I can remember. And obviously Jenkins has existed before that. So tons to list and go over and share and highlight and celebrate. Um, we did have uh, we have been able to create this list previously and we're still continuing to use this as um, an outline and, and kind of just a, a marker for where we should be and what we should be including. Uh, so we've got themes like platform modernization, development acceleration, website improvements, so for Jenkins.io, uh, localization and simpli simplification, uh, or outreach and advocacy, uh, security infrastructure and sponsors. And we wanna make sure that we celebrate and highlight as much as we can with this. Um, Bruno and Alyssa are working on uh, the newsletter itself as far as putting that into a pull request and getting that published. And every SIG leader is working on their own updates to include as much as possible. So, uh, uh, so sorry to interrupt you, uh, Kevin. Go for it. So the source of truth uh, keeps being the same document we've been using for the monthly newsletter. It's not that Jenkins Docs Office Hours document. Am I right? That is. I'm keeping. Yeah. Okay. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely That's correct, correct Bruno. Um, the the for the Jenkins newsletter, we're still going to be using the draft template that Alyssa created and set up and okay. has shared with everyone. Um, so that's still the one source of truth for all of this. This is just the list that we've been working on to make sure that if anyone you know forgets one of the many, 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 many things that have happened this <laughs> year, we can help fill in the blank a little bit. Okay. Um, I'm sure stuff like Java 11 and 17 and a lot of these, like the, a lot of these were very, very large things that I'm sure won't go missing. Um, but we've also had other things happen, like the development acceleration is a lot of behind the scenes stuff and uh, work that is not necessarily seen, but felt. So um, mm -hmm. making sure we call and highlight that stuff out is really important. We have a lot of great developers and maintainers in Jenkins. So um, these are really things where we want to make sure everyone gets a chance to be recognized, even if um, their name's not attached to it, everyone knows what they've been working on. So, uh, yeah, and then um, we might end up moving some of these things like the localization simplification, maybe switched over to development acceleration or platform modernization or website improvement. It can be, some of these are not so uh, hard and fast set in stone. Um, I had a few things about the elections and we moved everything into outreach and advocacy because it just makes sense. Um, and then things like the community site, which I mean, for me now, it seems like it's just always been the case, but uh, I realized that that's new. So these are all things that we want to make sure people are aware of. Um, the community site's really nice and has a wonderful area for everyone to discuss Jenkins in any capacity they wish. Um, that's something we should really highlight and celebrate and make people aware of. I'm sure everyone's using it, but something so simple uh, is having a large impact. And I always love making sure that that sort of, you know, scale is called out. Um, when can I consider that the content of the newsletter is frozen, ready to publish? I assume not until January 1. Oh, okay. Yeah, this least... is all... Be still yeah my my assumption is it'll be at least january one now i'm i'll start i hope to start my writing today on my pieces mm -hmm. the the governance board topic and some of the some of the items that are that are in the early list the platform modernization things i'm gonna i'm planning to do most of the writing uh, a bunch of writing there and development acceleration and I may, in my past role as as docs officer and as Google Summer of Code mentor, do things on the website improvements because because of how personally grateful I am to Vihan Thora for what what he did there. <laughs> so so that that piece, but that will need at least several days. So if it's okay with you, Bruno, that of course it waits it is. until January one. We don't intend to publish until after the first of the year. But if you need more lead time. We could we could set ourselves an earlier than January one date no, if, that, no. if that's really needed. No, no, that's perfect with me. Uh, I'm not in a hurry, so that's that's fine. Thank you. Um, and sorry, I had another thing in mind. I saw earlier today because you were speaking about GSOC 2023 that two people wanted to become mentors for this year. Two more people, so that's a good thing for us. Oh, that's awesome. I hadn't seen that. I must have missed it. Thank you very much for uh, sharing that. Brand. You're welcome. That's awesome. 
the more mentors, the better. Obviously, we can reach more, help more people, work with more people, the more resources we actually have. Yeah. Um, and it's no small commitment. We absolutely appreciate every mentor taking on uh, the time and effort and work that comes along with it. But uh, that's uh, that's that's amazing. I'm so happy to hear more and more people are getting interested. Thank you. And uh, as far as my update goes, I'm looking right now, I'm doing a lot of the documentation of things not listed here. Uh, but my idea right now is just to highlight and share how much contributions and changes have happened. Um, I'm working right now uh, with the community stats to just kind of recap how many blog posts have been created, how many authors have um, you know participated in the blog, uh, the number of pull requests we've gotten merged over the last year, which is almost 900. It's, that like stuff like that. So um, I want to, I'm working on making sure that we're highlighting the community and, and their documentation contributions as well. So um, yeah, lots of good stuff to come. And uh, yeah, like I said, uh, I'm also writing up little things for a lot of these items, just in case, like I said, the gap is there. Uh, so we'll have something, even if I'm not the most well-versed on something, I have enough uh, in, me to, in me to go and figure it out, so. And then Wadik will uh, Wadik and others will be working on the security stuff, um, and so we'll just keep chugging along on that, and we'll get that taken care of. And yeah, uh, most likely somewhere around January third to fifth, I would imagine. So, anything else on the December newsletter? Or no. <laughs> okay, that's fine. No, no worries. I'm no. Thank you so much, Bruno. Uh, and then so just to. Um, as we're reaching the bottom of the agenda here, the second to last item is pull requests of note. Um, these are just a couple of items that are coming up and that have been submitted that we want to bring to everyone's attention. Uh, first and foremost, the 2.375.2 uh, LTS release, which is going to be January 11th. Um, I've gotten the change log and upgrade guide created. Uh, that pull request is submitted and open for feedback. So if anyone wants to take a look and uh, review, I appreciate that and thank you in advance. Um, and then the second item here is the web components for Jenkins.io. Uh, this is something that Gavin Mogan has been working on for some time now uh, and has made a lot of headway in. We've got the header and footer already kind of working in the plugin site. Um, and this is just adding more Jenkins IO components. Uh, in addition, removing a bunch of stuff that we don't need anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. So making the page load lighter, we get the consistency of look and feel across multiple sites, regardless of whether or not they're um, Jenkins, plugins, whatever have you. Um, they can all use the, the uh, web components so that there's unity across. Uh, so uh, this is a fantastic. He does. Uh, we do want to get some more uh, review and testing on this just to see how everything looks and works. But um, this is a really fantastic uh, effort from Gavin and uh, again, really appreciate all the work he's doing for this. Um, Mark, is there anything I missed on the components that we should also mention or does that cover everything? For no, that, that covers it. I think the concept of web components is brilliant. And mm -hmm. I'm so grateful for Gavin to Gavin for being willing to to bring it forward. It's even Absolutely. being considered for possible inclusion inside Jenkins Core. Ooh. Oh, nice. So now now the the exact components Gavin's creating don't belong in Jenkins Core. They don't make sense. They're just for the Jenkins website. But but the concept of web components is a is an interesting and very attractive kind of thing. Nice, definitely. That's fantastic. Great, thank you, Mark. Uh, and lastly, on the agenda here, uh, just the pull request backlog. Uh, so one thing that we wanna, of course, always do is encourage users to participate and contribute to Jenkins. Uh, the pull request backlog is right now at 43. We can absolutely get it lower, um, but we wanna make sure that people feel they're being heard and their participation is noticed and is being acted on. So uh, our goal uh, when we get back from break is to make sure that we, we start uh, getting this cleaned up and, and closing out some tickets or merging things that can be merged um, and making sure that you know we're acting on these things. They're not just sitting there waiting. Um, contributors wanna make sure that they're heard, felt, and you know at least talked to, um, if not worked with further. So this is the absolute easiest way to get started on that and make that impact for them. 
uh, and hopefully empower them to continue contributing. Um, we've had a lot of great uh, additions and improvements this year from the Google Summer of Code project, She Code Africa, uh, from all, all of the you know, different projects we've participated in this year have been immensely uh, fruitful for Jenkins as a whole. And we wanna keep that going strong into 2023. So uh, yeah, more to come on that, but something that we'll be taking care of in due time. Uh, now with that, that takes care of everything on the agenda. Did anyone have anything else they want to share or add before we stop the recording for uh, today's session and uh, say happy holidays? If not, great. I'll go ahead and stop the recording. It will be available within 24 to 48 hours. And uh, again, thank you to everyone for the past year. 2022 has been amazing. We've had so many Jenkins. Uh, it just events in general, whether it's uh, Jenkins.io actual events or um, just the projects and participations we've been able to collaborate on. So thank you to everyone, uh, all the contributors. And um, especially for me personally, I wanna thank Mark and Bruno who have been here with me every session uh, being a very nice audience, so. You're the best. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Happy holidays to both of you. Yeah, happy Thanks holidays you, to everyone and happy new year.